This week's Next Gen is presented by PFI, home of Boot Daddy. You might have to pull out your Missouri map to find our cola, but that's where we met up with Lane Hankins, a diversified beef and row crop producer. I'm Lane Hankins. I'm a graduate student at Missouri State's Dar College of Agriculture, and I farm in Arcola, Missouri with my family. My earliest memories are probably sitting in the farm truck with Dad eating peanut M&Ms, going around and checking cows and opening gates. I started working cows with the neighbors at seven or eight. I wasn't much help, but I'd always hang off the panels and just be out there with them. So, so today we run a cow-calf operation, and we farm corn and soybeans as well. And in recent years, going to college and things we've learned about the benefits of cover crops and what they can offer. And so we've also started growing cover crops after our corn to provide an additional forage in some of the off months. While Lane might have played a small role on the farm as a child, his responsibilities have grown significantly over the years. This December, when he graduates with a master's degree in agricultural science, he plans on returning to the farm while also holding a full-time job as a seed salesman. What do you do with this corn we're seeing here once harvested? The majority of it we're taking straight to the bin, but then some of it we're also taking to our local hub later, and they grind it into feed where we give that to our, we feed that to our steers that we background. So let's kind of look at what type of corn we're looking at this year. Well, I guess I'd just say corn's corn, but I mean, here's a, here's a representable, a good ear, but then we also have, we've got the small ears there. Mm -hmm. They just didn't fill out. Not very uniform make. size and shape this year. Yes, we'd like to see twice as big as what we got. But this is what we had to work with, so we're gonna harvest it anyway. The hot, dry summer has impacted most farmers in Southwest Missouri, including Lane and his family. The stalks are weak, and actually what you see there is wind damage. The tops okay. have blown out of the stalks. But a good corn harvest, we wouldn't be able to see where we were going. The corn would be above the, above the combine. We've got to count on good years before to get us through, but you know, it just, it, input costs are definitely gonna be above what we're gonna make out of this. Mm -hmm. You know, we might shoot for 130 bushels, and this year we're making anywhere from 30 to 50 bushels. It's, it's less than half of what we'd hoped for. Regardless of the lower yield brought on by the drought, Lane's passion and dedication for farming is obvious. By incorporating the things he learns at school into his family farm, he has been able to become an even better steward of the land. At what age did you know that you wanted to farm, that you wanted to uh, pursue your education, but know that you were gonna come back to the family farm? I'd say freshman or sophomore of high school is when it really just kind of came about. You know, I was always wanting to be a part of it, and my dad kind of kept me away just a little bit, just trying to keep me safe. But I think he finally gave in and saw that I was going to be out here one way or the other. So he decided I was old enough, and I really started taking a, a role in the operation rather than just being there. Lane's just one of the many young people coming back to the family farm, pursuing a career in agriculture, and applying what they've learned in the classroom to both. 